Welcome! This episode shows how I properly installed my patio piers and columns strictly in accordance with my architectural, design, and county construction requirements. Prior to seeing this episode, you may assume that this topic does not cover any high interest stuff. If so, you couldn't be further from being wrong. It's absolutely critical that you or your builder strictly follow my steps in this approach to incorporate the alignment specifications in the architectural drawings into the actual patio construction. In other words, this episode shows how to accurately incorporate the paper plans into the actual three-dimensional patio structure. Like my other five parts, this episode will clearly show you how to meet your county's permit requirements and enable you to pass your building inspections efficiently. Most importantly, it will show you how to build a great structure that will last indefinitely. More specifically, in this effort, we will implement the footing plan and column and beam plan. We'll provide for the left and right beam attachments to the house. We'll dig the piers and cut the concrete. We'll then align the right and left rows of columns in position and install these columns. And we'll finish by calculating the number of concrete bags to purchase and pour the concrete. This is the third in my six part series on these patio design and construction areas. As a potential patio builder and owner, you have five viable options for completing this effort. You can use them individually or use them in combinations with the other options shown here. You can perform all the work yourself as the contractor. You have the option of subcontracting some of the tough construction tasks to the experts like I did. After studying parts one through six of my series, you can use this information for developing questions to interview your potential contractors for your patio work and show this series to your potential contractors to define your requirements. You can ask your contractor to review parts one through six and ask him or her to design and construct a variation that matches your home and meets your requirements. Lastly, you can use my six patio episodes for monitoring your contractor to keep him and his construction crew honest. At this time, we are going to align the right and left hand side columns and beams of the patio with their right and left wall connections to the house. We'll do this strictly in accordance with the footing plan and column and beam plans that I discussed in detail during part two of my patio design series. The upper right hand corner of the column and beam plan calls for installing a treated 4x6 post inside the back wall of the kitchen at this location. It's very important to note that this 4x6 column defines the alignment of the right patio beam and columns with this line drawn in red on the column and beam plan. I started this effort by removing the siding and preparing to remove the plywood panel from the right side of the back of the house. It's also important that you do your best not to damage the siding that you remove. Builders buy unique siding by the truckloads, so it's very hard to match your home siding with the siding that is available at Home Depot, Lowe's, and other locations. Consequently, it's important not to damage the siding because you'll have to reinstall it after completing the effort. I successfully removed the plywood panel and it's resting against the side of the house on the left. After completing the post installation, I'll reinstall the panel again and I'll also reinstall the siding on this area. This is what the inside of the back wall of the kitchen looks like. We have insulation here. This is a heating duct that runs to the upstairs bedroom and the rear side of the kitchen drywall is shown here. This is the 2x4 corner of the kitchen wall that I'm going to remove and replace with a treated 4x6 column that I will in turn attach to the patio beam. These two photographs show how I align the right row of patio beams and columns with the house. I started with the plumb bob connection on the top of the 2x4 to be removed in the left photograph. I then dropped the plumb bob spring and marked the plumb bob location on the concrete in the right photograph. This defines the right side of the patio beams and columns and is depicted in red in the column and beam plan shown above. This shows how I installed the 4x6 column in the back of the kitchen wall. 
I glued and screwed it into the 2x4 shown on the right. I also attached a Simpson connector on the top of the column and then attached the connector to the first 2x10 beam on top of the column. I then bolted that beam to the 2x4 on the right. Next, I added the 1 half inch layer of chipboard shown here. I continued to build the beam by adding another 2x10 and one more 1 half inch chipboard layer and then a third 2x10. This expanded the beam to a thickness of 5.5 inches which is the same width of the 6x6 column. By the way, some people refer to chipboard as OSB or oriented strand board. If you're looking for it on the Home Depot or Lowe's website, I recommend that you search for OSB. The left side of the patio attachment was much simpler. The upper left hand corner of the column and beam plan calls for securing the 2x10 beam against the side wall of the house with 5 8 inch lag bolts. So I removed the siding here similar to removing the siding on the right side of the house. This shows how I attached the 2x10 beam with 5 8 inch lag bolts to the studs in the wall on the left side of the house. I did this after I installed the columns on the left side of the patio. In addition, this defines the alignment of the left side of the patio columns to the left side of the house as shown in red in the column and beam plan below. In the lower right hand photograph I added more 1 half inch chipboard and additional 2x10s to complete the left beam. I next rented an auger with a 12 inch bit to bore holes for the piers at these eight locations in my footing plan. Notice that the top three arrows identify areas where I had to cut into the existing concrete and remove it prior to boring these holes. To do this, I rented a large gasoline powered concrete cutting saw from True Value Hardware. I had to be very careful while augering the piers to maintain perpendicular alignment with the house and bore the piers in accordance with the footing plan vertical and horizontal measurements. I did this by ensuring that diagonal distance A equal diagonal distance B and diagonal distance C equal distance D. I dug my pier holes in accordance with detail A in my architectural drawings, which called for a 12 inch diameter at the top, a 16 inch diameter at the bottom, and a 30 inch depth. I chose to go with a 32 inch dip to ensure that I passed my building inspection the first time. For safety purposes, I covered my eight pier holes with plywood scraps. In order to meet the challenge of installing the tops of my piers and the bottoms of my columns along this slope away from the house, I invented, designed, and built this column alignment tool. Standing with me is my son, who was home from college in severe need of a haircut. Nevertheless, both he and his brother did an outstanding job helping me throughout this patio construction. It is important to note that I built the center of the alignment tool with high-grade pine that I purchased from Home Depot. This pine, which was perfectly straight, ensured that I achieved accurate perpendicular alignments using a four-foot level. We're setting up the side supports for the column using our column alignment tool. Basically, we obtained a perpendicular orientation of the center of the column alignment tool. By centering it over the pier hole, establishing a perpendicular orientation with our four foot level, and clamping these horizontal members of the column alignment tool to the side supports with wood clamps. We then pencil mark the top and bottom of the front horizontal member on the left and right side supports. Knowing the distance from the bottom of the column alignment tool to the bottom of the horizontal cross member, we mark this distance on the front of the actual 6x6 column. We then screwed it to the column while it was horizontally positioned on two sawhorses. The three of us then picked up the 6x6 column, lifted it over the center of the pier hole, and aligned it with the pencil marks on the side supports of the column alignment tool. We then clamped and screwed the front horizontal member to the side supports. We finished by screwing the back horizontal member to the 6x6 and left and right supports for additional strength. Shown here is the red string that replicated 
the downward slope of the patio concrete shown in the lower left photo. We completed this pier alignment for all eight pier locations shown in the upper left photo and maintained the integrity of the Detail A pier requirements shown in the lower right photo. We then quickly added 2x4 braces to ensure the columns didn't move. Per Detail A, I then added four reinforcement rods to each pier. I also hung the pier tubes with this red string. Using this approach, we continued installing the columns. Throughout the rest of the effort, we perfectly maintained this downward slope. We continued the column installation until all eight columns were perfectly in place. I wanted to ensure that I didn't purchase too many bags of concrete because they are very difficult to return to the store and their bags easily tear. As we all know, when a concrete bag is torn, its dust makes a horrible mess. I used the well-known formula at the top showing that volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times the cylinder height. Here, I'm actually dealing with two different volumes. The 12 inch diameter volume from the top of the pier and the 16 inch diameter volume at the bottom. For my first volume calculation, I use pi or 3.14 times 6 inches squared and multiplied that product total times 32 to obtain 3,617 cubic inches. I then divided it by 1,728 cubic inches per cubic foot to obtain 2.1 cubic feet for the first volume. As shown for the volume of the 16 inch diameter cylinder, I obtained 3.7 cubic feet and then estimated the actual volume as 2.9 cubic feet, which is halfway between 2.1 and 3.7. Knowing that each 80 pound bag of quickcrete provides 0.6 cubic feet of concrete, I determined that I needed five bags per footing for a total of 40 bags of concrete for the entire job. Believe it or not, this turned out to be a very accurate calculation. I only had to purchase one more bag of concrete to finish the job. We then rented a cement mixer and started pouring concrete. Shortly thereafter we finished the job. This concludes the pier and column portion of this project. At this time I'm moving on to part 4 of my patio series showing how I completed my initial framing construction. You're more than welcome to follow. In addition, if you have a great project that you want to post on my YouTube channel, email me some pictures and a brief description of it. If it qualifies for the Let's Fix It Right standards to help others, I'll interview you over the phone as a guest do-it-yourselfer, produce a high-quality video, and post it on my Let's Fix It Right channel. For the year following this posting, I'll share 50% of the potential YouTube benefits with you. If you have any subject matter requests or recommendations, please contact me. All of this said, I recommend that you subscribe to my channel, follow my projects, and save a bundle of money doing it.